Uh, I will not really present an, an academic paper since I, I left the university for six years. Uh, I was a member of the ARCEP, A -R -C -E -P, uh, which is uh, the agency, the independent agency in charge of the regulation of telecoms uh, and of the internet at this time, of course, and also of the post office. And uh, it's uh, uh, the organization of this agency exists in all, all over the world. For example, the equivalent in the, in the States is uh, the FCC or, or in, um, in Germany is uh, Beretza or in Britain it is the Ofcom. So maybe you know one of uh, these uh, agencies. And the idea is that these agencies are independent from the government, even if we are, uh, if we are uh, named by, uh, uh, by the government. But when, when you have been, uh, when, when you are in the position of a member of uh, the agency, you become totally independent and you uh, cannot be fired uh, for six years. And uh, the mandate cannot be uh, renewed, so the independency is quite is almost natural. Okay, so uh, my question is: uh, Should we regulate uh, internet platforms? And uh, I should have written: uh, Should we regulate uh, digital platforms? And probably uh, giant platforms, because uh, the, at this time the debate uh, does not really concern small platforms that can be uh, created by startups. Uh, the idea in Europe and all over the world is that platforms have become giants, the di big digital platforms have become giants, and uh, the idea and the question is, should we regulate uh, them? And there are many reasons for regulating platforms. Uh, not only antitrust uh, reasons, but also tax ev evasion. Um, privacy, the qu question of privacy, the question of data, and uh, many other reasons. So I will, uh, we will uh, uh, stress this question more precisely. So um, I thought it was a one, hour, one hour and a half, but I will, uh, I will try to stay uh, uh, longer. So, oops. <coughs> oh, the slides didn't work. You had a picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, no. Okay. So maybe I start. I start uh, the introduction with a definition and uh, with uh, some remarks about the scope of the paper, of the presentation. Uh, what do we call online platforms? Uh, they are intermediaries, of course, and they reduce, at the same time, transaction costs incurred by agents before the transaction, for example, search costs, is the case of Google, and they reduce, as well, cost incurred during the transaction itself. And I would add that the... Oh, sorry. The, uh, nothing works. They facilitate uh, the match between uh, users and platforms. They're coming. Ça marche pas toujours? No, no, they vont, ils vont venir nous dépanner. Mais, euh, J'attends. Sinon, je vais chercher le milieu. 
So they facilitate the match between numerous suppliers and users. And um, we can add that platforms open the way for connections between users and applications and content developed by third parties. And for example, there are many, uh, uh, of course, you, you, know, you all uh, know uh, the collection of apps that are available on your, uh, on your smartphones, not only on the uh, Apple smartphones, but on others if you have other smartphones. And uh, there are many examples of digital platforms. And, uh, for example, you, you, or you know uh, Google, Booking, uh, Kickstarter, Uber, Amazon, etc. Uh, the notion of platform encompasses uh, uh, a very vast array uh, of situations. Uh, you have search engines, sharing economy services, etc. And uh, one point, one very important point is that most platforms are American and Chinese. And this is a very important point because, because it's probably a reason why Europe is so um, eager to uh, uh, regulate platforms because uh, we have a problem at this time. We use platforms which are uh, mostly American, not Chinese in this time, but American, except Spotify, which is a Swedish platform but uh, most of those big platforms are American. And for example, you have, uh, for example, YouTube is almost a monopoly for video, uh, for video uh, at this time. And there was a French platform which, has, uh, which is at this time, which does not exist at this time. Okay? I would like to show you a picture. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> Do you think we wait uh, for me? <laughs> yes, because I was very proud of my picture. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> because my, on the next picture, I hope you will, <laughs> will be able to see it. You, you see... Uh, uh, a comparison between uh, uh, Europe, uh, uh, sorry, American and Chinese platform, and you see uh, their um, market capitalization, and it's uh, very uh, impressive to see. Ah, Ah, c'est pas ton écran. Ah non. C'est un partage d'écran. Ouais, je sais que c'est une question de configuration. La technologie. Oh, ok. Non, maintenant c'est bon. Ah, ça c'est le mode Skype. Je vais me dire, mais tout le monde. Parce que je sais qu'on est dans le temps. Ouais. Je vais essayer de travailler. 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 Je vais names of platforms, but uh, this one is interesting because you have the market capitalization of some platforms, the biggest platforms, and in each, uh, uh, in each uh, uh, part of the, of the slide, 
uh, you see each time the uh, comparison between Chinese and American platforms, their market capitalization, taking into account that at each time they are they have the same kind of activity. For example, Alibaba and Amazon for uh, the sale of different uh, of different uh, assets, etc. You have uh, Tencent and Facebook for social networks. You have uh, Xiaomi and Apple. And you have Baidu and Alphabet, Alphabet which is uh, the new name of Google. And you see that uh, China is uh, almost at the same uh, level as the one of America, and uh, the uh, rate, uh, the growth rate of the Chinese platform is much higher than the one of the American platforms. So I think they are going to uh, converge at the same uh, uh, level, at the same size. And uh, this is uh, probably, I don't know what you think of that slide, but it's quite impressive. And uh, so uh, the question of platform is uh, important also because the uh, platform uh, probably transform the entire industries uh, like commerce, advertising, uh, and other activities. And we face uh, disruption. The world is now uh, very used by everybody, but the uh, sense of the world is uh, very uh, precise and uh, developed by Clayton Christensen. It was developed the first time by Christensen in a book uh, a well-known book in America, which uh, is entitled uh, The Innovator's Dilemma. And I would add that platforms are probably uh, the future design of companies in the whole industries. For example, if you observe what uh, uh, car industry does at this time, uh, they work as, plat as platforms more and more as a platform than they, uh, their um, organization uh, is like the one of a platform. And this is very important. So the challenges are very numerous. And one of the challenges, one of the more important challenges is to wonder, to ask uh, whether platforms serve innovation. Uh, because many, uh, many academics say that uh, analyzes, uh, make many academic analyses conclude that contrary to its initial philosophy, uh, the web at this time is helping to create new gatekeepers, Google, uh, Facebook, etc. And it's a paradox because uh, at uh, the beginning, the web was uh, fought and was uh, considered as a, a space of, uh, uh, of freedom, of, of free access for everybody. And the, you have behind uh, this uh, remark all the question of, uh, um, of uh, the net neutrality. And uh, you can read on this question a book that is uh, a very excellent book by uh, Yoshi Benclair, maybe you know him, The Wealth of Networks. And uh, so this is the first question which is quite important. And the second question is why and how should they be regulated? And uh, I think, and I will try to, to explain why, that a new kind of regulation is needed um, and uh, it is probably something that should be uh, done very quickly because uh, if uh, platforms are gatekeepers, they can uh, close the system and uh, entry barriers are very high. So, in order to uh, develop all these points, I will uh, stress uh, five, uh, five points. First one, some remarks about the economic model of platforms. The second point about uh, why should we regulate? Of course, I'm a regulator, so I think that we should regulate. And the third 
question the tools of regulation, and you will see that the tools exist, they are very numerous, maybe too numerous. The fourth point about the limits of regulation and the difficulties we, uh, uh, we, uh, we find when we try to, uh, to make a regulation, and my, five, uh, my last point will be uh, concluding remarks about uh, the new regulation, and uh, one of my uh, positions is to, uh, to, 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 to say that uh, we, should, uh, we should put forward a kind of cross-regulation, and I will try to explain what I mean by uh, this expression. So, first point, the economic model of platforms. Um, Digital economy is characterized by four features. Uh, it's, uh, you have a, a, a very huge academic literature on, the, on, on this uh, question. Uh, here I, qu I quote uh, Bourreau in 2017, but you have uh, uh, many, many papers about, of course, the, the characteristics of uh, digital economy. and. Uh, I will um, stress here the features uh, that link, uh, that, that uh, lead to try to uh, rethink the question of regulation. So the first feature is uh, the blurred uh, geographical frontiers. Um, digital economy is a globalized economy. And, for example, it's very uh, difficult to assign activities to jurisdictions. It's very complex. For example, uh, Google has activities in all over the world, but it's very difficult to say what kind of activities and what uh, level of activities it has in France or in Ireland or in uh, Great Britain, etc. And this is probably the first question and uh, the, the companies can have their uh, activities located in the country, and uh, even if they uh, make uh, many things in another common country. The second point is the large network externalities, which give monopoly power to platforms because of coordination issues. Of course, network externalities is a central point of the economic model of platforms. Uh, digitization generates uh, network ex externalities that can be direct network externalities or indirect uh, network externalities. So the idea of externalities, you, every, everybody knows that it is the idea that the utility of a user derives from consumption, uh, uh, derived from consumption, uh, what, what did I write? So, uh, the more users you have on a platform, and the higher the value of the platform. This is a, a very, uh, a, a very uh, simple idea. And so I said that network effects can be direct or indirect. So direct effects is very easy to understand. It is the idea, for example, that the number of people who uh, can be called increases the benefit from having a telephone. So it's evident. And the second point, indirect, uh, indirect uh, ex uh, externalities, it is the idea that when uh, uh, the increased uh, number of users of one group uh, uh, attracts uh, users of another group, and for instance, uh, end consumers of a system, and uh, when the end consumers of a system are, uh, is growing, oh, the number of developers of, the applic of applications on Apple, for example, can grow. And, uh, of course, it's very important to understand that you have, uh, at the same time, direct and indirect uh, externalities. 
And uh, the third point, uh, the third point is the idea that the collection of data uploaded by users uh, and used as inputs generates profits for the platform. And it's of, of course, it's very important for uh, regulators, but because the idea is that the more you have, you can collect data and uh, you can, uh, by uh, this way, you can make uh, new profits for the platform. And the question of, of the data is central, of course, for regulators. And the last point is that uh, platforms are two-sided uh, markets, two-sided platforms, and even sometimes they are multi-sided platforms. And uh, what do I mean by that? It's a well-known idea. I think you all know that. Uh, it was put forward uh, a long time ago by uh, Lafon, Tirol, and Rocher. And the idea is that platforms are used to connect different actors. And pricing strategies on different sides of the platforms are interdependent. It's very easy to understand, for example, if you consider that a, a TV channel is a platform, the platform has two kinds of markets. It has a first market that is to uh, provide uh, programs for uh, audiences. And a second side of the market is to provide spaces for uh, advertisers. And there is a link between the number of people who um, who uh, look at uh, the TV at the same time and the price of the ads that are provided by uh, the TV channel on the second market. So uh, platforms are always, uh, when they are two-sided markets, they are organized like that. And if they were uh, uh, multi-sided markets, you would have, uh, a, for example, a third market that is uh, served by, by the platform. Oh, so internet platforms may be dominant content providers, and they are, con uh, they may be, and they are dominant content providers. Why? Uh, first of all, they collect personal data, I said that before, on users to provide valuable personal personalized services to their users, to these users. And we uh, all experiment this, uh, uh, this fact every every day on our computers, on our tablets, if you have tablets, on phones, etc. And so they collect many uh, uh, personal data. They know, uh, at this time, they know where I'm, I am because I used my uh, phone in order to uh, verify uh, the, how I can uh, come to uh, this place and uh, they know everything, and you know that it's very important. The second point, they offer the possibility of targeted advertising to a population of sellers. And for example, I will receive um, an ad for the restaurant, which is just uh, at, uh, uh, on, the, on the same avenue, etc. So this is the way to cite it platforms uh, function. And uh, users, of course, care about the amount and the relevance of the ads they receive. Uh, some, of, uh, some, some of us do not, do not want to receive ads, but it's a kind of uh, reciprocal market. We accept to give our data, our personal data, because we want to have a free access to information and to uh, the uh, products the, um, uh, the platform provides. So, uh, and advertisers care about the platform's audience. Of course, they want a big audience if, if, they, uh, if they provide uh, adverti advertising. And most of the value created by a digital platform comes from the data input uh, um, that is provided by users, an input that is free 
for the platform, and that is the main problem, of course. And data collection, analysis, and distribution play an essential role for in creating and shaping markets. And for example, I can give you an example in order to illustrate this, that point, which is quite important. Maybe you saw that at a very recently, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, bought uh, LinkedIn and for uh, 26.2 billion dollars, which is uh, uh, quite a sum. And uh, why? Because Link LinkedIn has almost uh, 500 million members and maps their connection. And what was interesting for Microsoft it was to have a look and to, uh, to, to use and to, to uh, uh, try to make money with that, have a look uh, on these connections. And I, I could uh, have uh, given many examples of these kind of uh, purchases at, uh, at a very high level of money. So, I give you here three cases of economic uh, platforms, of, um, of platforms, the biggest one, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and they are not, they do not provide the same kind of, uh, uh, of uh, activities and of services. And for, for example, of course, uh, uh, Facebook provides social services, Google provides services. The first one is the search engine, whose value depends on algorithms. And uh, Amazon provides services of intermediation. Uh, it's a marketplace and recommendation between consumers and providers. So they have not exactly the same kind of activities, but at, for each one, you see that you find networks effects or cross networks effects, and of course scale revenues. And um, um, for example, if you if we give the example of uh, Google, it's very interesting because for Google, once the algorithm is developed, it uh, of course it's costly to develop an algorithm, but once it's developed, it can serve billions of users and uh, the accumulation of data is a commodity that can serve then uh, to create revenues in all kinds of uh, activities for example uh, 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 i will give uh, uh, some examples for, for example if you sh if you look for a shop uh, or for mapping etc and uh, the economic business of google is based on advertising, and it's very important to understand that even when they serve, when they give uh, free ac uh, free uh, uh, services, uh, of course there is behind the idea to be more and more precise when you uh, send a request, and by this way to uh, be a monopoly for search um, uh, as a search engine. And for example, when uh, Google decided to create a new uh, library uh, with all the books uh, that were published in the, in the same uh, library, the idea was to create a uh, that was to create a search engine which would be more and more efficient and more precise in the. Uh, the answer to your requests. So, why should we regulate? In a certain way, I have already uh, answered to this question, but there are many uh, reasons uh, for regulating. I will not present all the reasons for regulating, but maybe some of them. Uh, in the USA, uh, regulators emphasize the idea of that Platforms are uh, very important for innovation, and that regulation should be very light in order to um, open the way to innovation. And 
especially at this time, with the change at the head of uh, the FCC and with a new regulator which is very uh, liberal. Uh, the idea is that uh, it's not important to regulate. Uh, in Europe, uh, we don't uh, share uh, this point of view, maybe because we, are, we don't have uh, giants. But it's not, I don't think it's, not the, it's the only reason why we don't share this uh, point of view. I think that even when, if giants were uh, European, we would have the idea that it's very important to, um, to regulate platforms for many reasons. And uh, because we think exactly the contrary of American position, the idea is that locking uh, maybe a platform um, apply a kind of lock-in of users and create entry barriers. And uh, by this way, there are uh, barriers for innovation. The second point is, of course, the size and the economic power of platform and, uh, and the market power of platforms, of course. And many uh, academics at this time in Europe say that it would be in very important to uh, separate the different activities of giants in um, different uh, companies in, instead of uh, having integrated platforms. And the, first, the third question is a question of privacy and of national sovereignty which is, of, of course, uh, uh, very uh, crucial. So, uh, I will not uh, present too many details about each point. Uh, the, maybe the same point, lock-in as a break for innovation. Lock-in and entry barriers, it's, very, uh, it's a very crucial, crucial question. So platforms say, no, we, we, uh, we put forward and we develop innovation. And for example, Apple gives the uh, example of apps. They are on uh, Apple, you can find 2 million apps on the Apple App Store. And apps are developed by, uh, by you. If you want to try to develop an app, you can do it. And we've always the same, always the same model: uh, seventy percent for the developers and thirty percent of the reviews for Apple. And it's a genius uh, model because uh, it does not cost cost much money to Apple. And uh, of course, developers are very interested in being uh, on the App Store because they think that they have a visibility which is not evident when you think that you have two million apps, apps on App Store. Uh, I don't know how many apps you know, but probably uh, less than 100. So, uh, the problem of the App Store, but not only of the App Store, many stores, is the switching costs uh, that can be real or perceived, but they are real. Um, incurred when changing supplier. For example, if you have a, a, kind, a Kindle uh, tablet and you want, uh, in order to read ebooks, and you want to read ebooks on your computer or on another pla uh, tablet, uh, so I wish you good luck. It's, uh, theoretically, it's possible, and in practice, uh, even me, I am theoretically uh, specialist and I, I could not do it. So, uh, and the second point, it's not only the technological uh, question, but uh, the locking is also, also, also sorry, uh, marketing, uh, uh, the shop is closed. You cannot uh, buy an e-book and read it on your tablet on another shop than uh, Amazon uh, uh, e-book shop. So it's completely locking. And uh, these uh, 
uh, costs are very high for the consumer. And, uh, you know, it's not a problem only for the consumer. It's, it is also a problem for the developers. And, for example, at the RCEP, at this time, and it was a, a file that I was, uh, I was in charge of this question, uh, we studied the question of the, how do we say, the terminal, the term, uh, the terminal of the, the terminal mobile, the, I don't know. Uh, the phones, it's not only the phones, the phones, the tablets, um, etc. Uh, so the devices. The devices. Thank you, thank you. Of the uh, final devices which are locked in. And if you, for example, if you are a young developer and you create a startup and you have an, uh, an app, uh, you are going to develop it for Apple. And if you want to develop it for in order for uh, the app to be read and to be um, uh, downloaded on BlackBerry or on another uh, phone, you have to uh, uh, restart all uh, your technology development because uh, uh, each time it's a, a locked system and uh, all uh, the exploitation system has to be rethink for another, uh, another device. So it's very costly and it's a kind of entry barrier. So this is, this is quite a problem because in the presence of uh, networks uh, effects, especially when combined with high s switching costs, a single firm they dominate quite easily the market, and it's what we call the winner takes all situation. The winner takes all uh, situation uh, is uh, uh, an expression uh, which was developed um, by uh, 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 through a comparison with the political uh, uh, system, American system, where uh, the elect. Uh, electoral system. So, conversely, openness, openness, the end of uh, switch, uh, switching costs, openness encourages entry on the market because the entrant can make use of the infrastructure of the ecosystems already in place and simply produce its specialized complement and it's the problem of the developers of an app. So that is quite important, and it's a question that was uh, uh, emphasized by the Autorité de la Concurrence in France, which is uh, the authority in charge of the question of antitrust in France. So this question leads to the question of monopolies. Are digital Platforms are monopolies. They are not, we can say, they are not totally monopolies, but for example, uh, the uh, uh, market share of Google in, your, in France for uh, its activity of search engine is higher than 90%. Uh, in the States, it's, it is slightly uh, lower, but it's about uh, 75, 80%. So it's very high. We can say that it's almost a monopoly. And the economic model of platforms naturally, I can say naturally, generates monopolies because of highly returns of scale. And uh, entry barriers are very high because a platform has to attain a critical mass of participants on one market side in order to attract participants on the other side. So it's very difficult to, entry, to enter in these markets. So the challenge is, for Tirol, for example, the challenge is to introduce contestability in order for new entrants to integrate the markets, of, of course, not 
the whole market, but by creating new niche markets, uh, and uh, theoretically it's possible, but it's really a challenge for uh, regulators. Uh, you can you have to keep in mind by, uh, that Google, Amazon, etc., have a very high, um, a very strong uh, possibility to uh, make lobbying in Brussels, for example. And there is a street in Brussels with the different re uh, lobbyists. And uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, etc., spend much money for lobbying. And uh, of course, uh, regulators don't have this power uh, to make a kind of lobbying uh, in Brussels. Uh, and it's a very unequal um, battle. So, and I, I can add that uh, tax optimization reinforces the economic power of platforms. I will come back to this question, but it's very important. Of course, if you have very big companies with uh, market capitalization, which is very high, as we saw before, and who don't, don't pay, who pay a very low level of, uh, of taxes, of course, uh, the, uh, it's an, a very unequal situation. So we had many uh, cases with Google, even in the States, and Google leveraged its dominance in general internet search, to muscle into adjacent specialized markets for product shopping, for example, for product shopping search and uh, price comparisons. And uh, there were seven years of investigation in Brussels in order to, to, to show that uh, uh, Google uh, used its dominant position in order to um, to, to muscle this uh, position on some markets for uh, shopping and for price uh, comparisons. Seven years, it's very long. And for seven years, you can guess that uh, the uh, position of Google was more and more uh, efficient and more and stronger and stronger, of course. So the EU European regulator uh, announced finally a fine of 2.42 billion euros for abusing its market position uh, to squeeze out uh, rival services in online shopping. So it was very important because by uh, finally obtaining uh, this possibility to apply a high level of uh, fine to uh, Google, maybe we can open future cases. And uh, there are many other uh, complaints uh, based on similar behavior of Google. Uh, for example, Google is accused of favoring its own restaurant and store review service at uh, the expense of rivals as Expedia, maybe you know Expedia and there are similar accusations for its mapping service. So it's uh, quite an important uh, point. And uh, this is linked also to the point I was uh, emphasizing, the question of tax optimization. Maybe you heard of the question of the, uh, of the case between uh, APEL and the European Commission, uh, that APEL was uh, based in Ireland. Ireland is, um, uh, how we call that, uh, uh, fiscal tax uh, paradise. Seven. Paradise, seven. yes. But uh, very recently, the European Commission uh, published a list of uh, the uh, paradise, but there was not Ireland in this list because it decided that there will not be European countries in the list because we have two 
two uh, paradises in, uh, in Europe. We have Ireland and we have Luxembourg. And uh, uh, we, we have to keep in mind that uh, Schulke, who was at the head, head of the European Commission, was uh, from Luxembourg, which, which is not uh, the only paradox of the system, of the European system. So tax optimization, of course, reinforces a dominant position. And uh, the tax base of major internet uh, platforms is reduced because of the dif difficulties of locating, in locating uh, activities, as I said in the introduction, and that uh, because major elements of the revenue generating chain, uh, like the use of personal data uploaded by the users, do not result in financial transactions. So it's very difficult to apply uh, the same uh, system of tax uh, of taxing uh, companies if uh, a part of the value chain is uh, uh, does not mean that you have uh, financial transactions. And some countries, even in Europe, negotiate very low rates in order to attract digital giants, and it's the case of, uh, of uh, Ireland. In Ireland, uh, Google, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Apple uh, paid about 0.0001% of taxes. So almost nothing. Uh, it is not the only uh, reason for uh, regulation, of, uh, for regulating platforms. Uh, of course, you have other questions which are quite important, which has not really economic question, but we, which are linked to the economic question of platform, which is a question of sovereignty. And uh, of course, uh, platforms are, have social, cultural, political power. We saw that with all the question of uh, uh, fake news, etc. And uh, a large scale of uh, scientific, uh, a large scale scientific study conducted by Facebook itself in 2012, uh, uh, 12, demonstrated that users' moods could be manipulated via messages fed to its users. And that is really a, a, a very uh, uh, important question. And but more generally speaking, personal data are a commodity or a currency. And uh, European Union antitrust regulation are taking a look at, uh, at data. Um, but uh, the scope, we, you, we will see uh, that the scope of their intervention is very narrow. Uh, so companies stock by use so-called big data and customer uh, records, industry statistics, and other information, if, uh, even, for example, um, information uh, supplied by administration in France, etc. And uh, the ability of social uh, media platforms to manipulate elections and to provide fake news is very high. So it's a, it's a huge question. And behind that, you have also a question that is uh, um, not very clear at this time, but it is the question of algorithmic neutrality on content. And all these questions should be, um, should be uh, uh, taken into consideration, consideration, thank you, uh, by regulators, but it's not, uh, it's very difficult to regulate. So how can we regulate? The first point is that tools already exist, and we when we look at the different tools that exist, for example, in Europe and in France, 
we see that we have many tools. For example, at the left side of this slide, you see that you have, we have the directive which is called e-commerce uh, in Europe concerning all uh, the platforms that make commerce. For example, the first one is Amazon, but it's not the only one. Uh, you have the directive e-privacy on the question of personal data, etc. You have the criminal law uh, for all the question of uh, uh, fake news, etc. You have, uh, and I would say that the idea of Emmanuel Macron to make a special law for fake news uh, is probably not uh, necessary because we have all uh, these uh, uh, these uh, tools. They exist. We have antitrust law not only in France, also at the, level, uh, at the European level. We have uh, uh, contract law, we have the consumer protection law, we have fix fiscal laws, we have uh, social laws, etc. So we have, uh, I would say that we have many tools and many institutions and agencies in charge, already in charge of the regulation in France or in Europe. We have the European Commission, the ARCEP, which is in charge of telecoms and internet uh, uh, regulation. We have uh, the CNIL, which is in charge of uh, the question of... Uh, um, it is a com national commission uh, uh, for uh, the light of... Uh, uh, what? Uh, Commission National, uh, National Commission of uh, Information and uh, Freedom. Non, c'est pas l'information. J'ai un trou. Et la liberté and freedom. You, we have informatique, informatique. Informatique, informatics right. and freedom. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. We have uh, the uh, antitrust uh, authority. We have the tribunal de commerce. Mm -hmm. Uh, the direction at uh, the Ministry of Economy who is in charge of the consum consumption and prices, etc. So we have many, many places where we take in charge the regulation. And my point, I will try to explain that more precisely, is that we need what we I would call cross regulations. We need to uh, to work together, uh, for example, the CNIL and the authority of the or the, la, or the antitrust authority, etc. We have to work together, and don't think we uh, work enough together. So, what can we do? Uh, first, regulation can merely result from the qualification of a company. What do I mean that, by that? With, for example, the case of Uber. Everybody knows Uber. Uber suffered a major defeat in its effort to overturn licensing requirements in Europe. Uh, because the idea of Uber is to use uh, drivers who have not the license to be drivers. So they are less expensive than uh, uh, taxis. And uh, the EU Court of Justice decided in December 2017, so it's very uh, uh, recent, it decided that the company should be regulated as a transportation service rather than a digital service. So what does it mean? If it is a digital service, in a certain way it escapes the, reg the regulators. It is not in the framework work of regulators. If it is a transportation service, it has to apply uh, the uh, different uh, obligations that exist for transportation services. So, therefore, uh, the decision forces Uber to deal more directly with national and local governments that set rules for car and transport services in Europe. Uh, the decision could have wider 
ramifications and for the sharing economic economy in general, not only for Uber, but also, for example, for Airbnb. Uh, the idea, the question for Airbnb is, is Airbnb a technology platform for sharing economy or a housing provider? And if it is a housing provider, it has to apply the same uh, rules than hotels. So it is not, uh, it, it, it uh, goes out from the sharing economy uh, to uh, reach the uh, all, uh, to, and it has to apply all uh, the obligations that are very high that apply to hotels. And at this time, it discusses with uh, regulators. And Airbnb decided to filter some types of listings in Paris, in part because it says it is a technology platform, not a housing provider. But I don't know how it will end. But uh, this is an example which is very interesting of the question of the regulation. Behind uh, 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 the question of regulation, you have the question of the qualifications of companies. What is, how can we qualify their activities? So uh, for other startups, it's also very important. The decision creates a frontier between apps, platforms, and services. And there is a risk for the new uh, covers in this economy. And the risk is a risk of fragmentation of online services regulated by national regulators. Because you, for example, you want to create a service which could be a European service and you will be obliged to apply the, the regulation that is in force in uh, Belgium, the regulation that is in force in France, in the UK, etc., which has no, are not the same regulation. And then the, uh, your uh, activity become, becomes very uh, difficult to put in force. The second point is the question of unfair competition. And I would uh, keep uh, the example of Uber, which is very interesting, because Uber is one point. But Uber created another uh, service, which is called Uber Pop. And Uber Pop service is uh, probably competing uh, very unfairly for operating its low cost. It's a low cost service uh, without the taxi licenses and without the authorization of the cities. And an action was, filled, was, uh, uh, was filed by Elite Taxi in Barcelona. Uh, which is seeking penalties against uh, Uber. And finally, uh, you have action in all over the world. And in Germany, the German uh, Federal Cartel Office, FCO, uh, says Facebook uh, 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 stopped, uh, sorry, stopped uh, the action of uh, Uber. And in another action against Facebook, uh, the FCO says Facebook abuses market dominance to collect data. And uh, the idea of FCO was that uh, Facebook asked, acts as a quasi-monopoly that was abusing its position to force its users to give up data. And uh, it is a problem of all the platforms, of course. And uh, the ruling is very significant because it comes from a competition regulator. And uh, because unlike Google, at this time, uh, Google has, uh, has been fined, as we already saw, uh, billions for monopoly practices, but Facebook escaped, um, escaped uh, the same uh, level of fines. And Facebook has not, to date, uh, uh, has avoided scrutiny of its market share. And with this decision of the FCO in uh, Germany, uh, the company has, uh, the, the idea is that the company has a dominant market position, 
uh, and this idea could expose the company to similar investigations uh, of many of its activities. So we face a moment, I think we face a moment where uh, the, the uh, uh, rapport de force. Uh, the balance of power. The balance of power. The balance of power, excuse me. Thank understand. you. The balance of power is uh, changing. I think it's changing between uh, big digital platforms and uh, regulators. So, the biggest question is probably the one of April and the question which is behind uh, this one is the question of the unfair cre competition created by the fact that uh, platforms don't pay or pay very low level of, uh, of, of um, taxes. And April was ordered to pay finally over 13 billion uh, euros in June uh, 2016 after the European Union judged that uh, uh, that April was getting in Ireland were, uh, were unlawful. The idea was that uh, April was the, uh, the level of taxes for companies is very low in Ireland. It's about 13% uh, uh, of their revenue, of their benefits, but of their profits. But uh, there was what is called a ruling between Ireland and Apple that allowed Apple to pay let us say, less than 1% of their revenue in uh, Apple, uh, in uh, taxes in Ireland. And uh, why Ireland uh, uh, negotiated this ruling? It negotiated this ruling because Apple creates uh, many uh, jobs in Ireland and because uh, the fact that Apple is, uh, is in Ireland is attracts over uh, companies in the digital and in the sharing economy. So for Ireland, it's very important to keep Apple situated in Ireland. And uh, it's time to conclude. This. It's time to conclude, and I'm very late. <laughs> so, I, um, how much time I have? Five minutes. Um, okay. So, two. Maybe we we discuss the limits of the regulation in the uh, discussion. I'm going to send uh, uh, an SMS to tell that I, I will be late in my uh, next. Uh, um, so, the limits of regulation. Which are the limits of regulation? Um, there are, there are many shortcomings for regulation. The first one is that if you want to regulate platforms, you cannot only regulate big platforms. You are going to regulate also the innovators. And maybe you create a disadvantage. Uh, secondly, you create a disadvantage. If you regulate the platforms uh, with residents in France, you are going to create a disadvantage for um, platforms that are in France compared with the others that have activities in France with a residence in another country. This is the first question. And the second point, which is much more on the economic question of platform, is that uh, um, uh, it's very difficult to um, show that platforms have predatory prices uh, because when you have uh, uh, multi-sided markets or two-sided markets, it's very difficult to prove that uh, the platforms uh, apply uh, predatory prices. I, we can go back to this question afterwards. The third question is the question of, um, of uh, advertising. It's, 
and uh, you have over question, for example, Tyrol emphasizes the question that it's very difficult to assess the fair level of the commission that the developers pay to platforms, and uh, therefore, I think that the different tools that exist should be discussed. And my conclusion is that it, it is very important to apply a kind of cross-regulation, for example, for uh, the first act of cross-regulation was the one with Apple, because it is the authority in charge of antitrust that uh, could, um, could show that uh, the taxes, the low level of taxes faced by Apple was a kind of um, state aid, uh, no, aid, state uh, aid, support, support to state subsidies, support. state subsidies, state support yeah. uh, to uh, Ireland. So uh, I think that the next step will be what I call cross regulation, and I uh, did have three papers I've just, uh, I have. Uh, uh, published on these questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Benamou, for your presentation. And um, we're going to use this and build on top of that by quickly summarizing the findings of the paper that we were sent to. Um, why it's maybe better to call platforms uh, gatekeepers in the context of regulation. And secondly, um, we will talk about why it might be necessary, uh, or further discuss why it might be necessary to regulate gatekeepers. Um, and then lastly, we will outline a new model of regulation that might work with the existing framework that we find in the European Union. <laughs> yeah, now that we've heard a bit about the risks that uh, gatekeepers pose, and they decide for us what we see and what we do, uh, I'm going to try to outline uh, a regulation that is possible within the framework that we find in the European Union. That's why I will call it lib though we call it liber liberalizing towards the common. Um, it is essentially uh, merging two proposals, one by Dobosch, which is a professor in Innsbruck, and uh, one by Smivorsky, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who is a PhD student here at Paris 13 of uh, Korea. And uh, I will make the, we will make the case that these two regulatory systems that were outlined by the two authors can build on top of each other. Not only can they build on top of each other, they can build on top of the existing framework that we find in the EU, and that is the very much competition-oriented uh, framework, and that's why we would also like to call it an order liberal path towards the data common, even though it sounds, it sounds a bit um, contradictory, but you'll see that it works. So, first idea that was outlined by Dobush was that we transform these closed systems into open networks. So first, what is an open network and what is a closed system? Very easy example, take email or take HTTP, so websites, everyone can use it, can host it, and communicate with the other one. So I can be a, an email provider, you can be an email provider, and we can communicate with each other. If we take uh, the other example that is a closed system, that would be the Facebook Messenger. I can only talk to you if you also use the Facebook Messenger, and you cannot create a service that based, is based on that uh, system. So if we, that is what Dobosch proposes, reclassify gatekeepers as network providers, um, we have the situation where these network providers under EU uh, ideas of competition would need to allow competition on their private networks. And that can then lead us to the situation where we legislate uh, that these gatekeepers have to open their standards. So uh, MySpace would have to communicate with Facebook. That means uh, they Facebook needs to implement uh, standards and systems that allow competitors to actually access the database and communicate uh, with that database. And that uh, would, for example, have, if that would have been the case, one would have seen that 
while MySpace already existed, Facebook could have taken the user base of MySpace. Uh, for Google, it would uh, require a bit more uh, of imagination, but we can also reclassify Google as a network if we say it, it lives off the data that is fed into the search engine, and we could say um, because of that, Google needs to license their algorithms to competitors who can then build on top of that. And these, uh, Dobush argues that these uh, open standards, they should be decided by a council that puts all the regulators, the stakeholders, so the companies and the users at the table. Um, the second idea was a data comment. So what is a data comment? Uh, first, again, start what we've just done. We've just, with the open standards, opened the access to the database. So we have identified the database, the access to the database as the source uh, that hinders competition. A data common would get, go one step further and it would transfer actually the ownership of that database into a common. Um, and this common would be uh, governed also again by a council that is made up of the stakeholders, so users, regulators and the companies. And the idea of behind the data common would be that the users voluntarily transfer their data into that common um, and maybe through a blockchain technology can actually decide for which purpose the data can be used. And then any platform that wants to can go to the common and through a copyleft license, <coughs> copyleft, the opposite of copyright, you can use the data freely if you provide the exact same uh, license again. Um, and they can, under that license agreement, use the data and build on top of that. And if if we want to even go a step further and take out the profit motive a little bit, we would then allow for platform, we would give platform cooperatives an advantage in saying, okay, if you don't have a profit motive, you can use the data from the data common freely. Uh, if you do have a profit motive, you're happy, we're, uh, you're welcome to use the data as well, but you would need to chip in uh, to pay for the storage of the platform cooperatives. So we see there, we can, if we open the networks, it's not that hard to transfer it into a data common. So there's this kind of straight line. And now I kind of read and said it's, it's uh, all compatible under the uh, existing EU regulations. And I'll just make quickly the case here why I think that. I think we already saw cases of network liberalization. So we force telecom providers and energy network providers to allow competition on their private networks. I remember very vividly in the 90s when my mom was very happy that she could pre-dial a number and then call for a lot less on the same network. And under that regulation, we could also um, open up Facebook, I would argue. And then the second thing for the data common, I think we're not that far from that either because of the general data protection regulation that the EU, I think, rather unbelievably passed, and that will take, uh, I think, in March, it will come into uh, power. And that data protection regulation essentially gives the ownership of the data to the individual who that data is about. And that is uh, done under three principles, the right of access, so the individual can always at any point access all the data that is stored. The right of erasure, the individual can always demand that data to be deleted, and here this is the most important thing, I, th I think, if we regard it from a data commons point of view, data portability. There is theoretically in this new regulation the right that you can transfer the data at any time in a way that it can be reused. So we could use this uh, principle to allow individuals to transfer the data into a data common. Now I think we did 16 minutes. And with that, I would to, I'd like to conclude. And I don't know how it is. It's 11.05 now. So I don't know if we have time for a few questions. If you would like to respond, what's, what is the sentiment? How should we go? Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. It's quite interesting, this question of commons. Uh, I, I think it's a complementary review. Uh, uh, 
compared with the one of regulators. Uh, regulators try to cope with the system as it exists, even if they say that internet is a common uh, good, uh, is a common. But uh, they they don't want to change the philosophy of uh, the uh, of the system. In uh, this uh, the framework you show, it's a new philosophy where you consider that. Uh, uh, platforms should uh, act as if they were provided commons. And um, the problem is that I think it's, it, it, it is a quite an interesting uh, proposal for uh, the platforms that uh, provide information or that provide a service which is a social uh, networks, social network service. Uh, it does not answer to the uh, question we can uh, uh, we can raise with the platforms like uh, Amazon, where the question is not a question of commons; it's a question of commerce. So it's not only uh, it's it's quite interesting, but for a certain uh, form of platform, uh, that's my my first remark. Uh, my uh, second remark is that uh, theoretically it's very interesting, but when you try to apply a regulation, uh, you face uh, many contradictions. I can give an example. For example, uh, Google pr uh, provides, as you all know, um, articles from the newspapers. And the new newspapers were very angry. They said, you don't spend the money in order to pay uh, uh, people who make uh, the articles. You don't, the papers, you don't, you, you, don't, uh, you have free riders. And it was true, they have free riders. And they said uh, to Google, please uh, give the articles, uh, give the papers uh, uh, for uh, no money, for free, but uh, Give, you will give us some money in order to pay for uh, the work of the journalists, etc. And Google said, no, I don't want to pay be, uh, because it's not our economic model. So it's not a problem. If you don't want to be on the platform, you will not be on the platform. And uh, the newspapers in Belgium uh, said, OK, we." We drop, uh, you drop uh, our newspapers from the platform. And after two or three months, I don't remember how much time, maybe more, uh, they say no, fin finally we change our mind because uh, Google provides a service which is to give us uh, visibility on the internet. And we need Google even if they don't pay. And finally they decided to uh, to make a deal with Google. And at this time, there is a deal in all Europe, almost all, all Europe in, with Google. They give a part of the paper, of the, of, the news, uh, of the article, and the rest you have to pay. But it was a, a long negotiation in order to find a solution. And if you want not to find this uh, solution, but, but a more uh, ambitious solution, telling uh, Google has to cope with the newspapers are com as commons. You have also to negotiate with the newspapers because uh, they don't want to be, uh, 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 they don't want to call to pro Google to provide free access to, to papers. So the, the solution is very, you, is very obvious, your solution for uh, the academic papers, for all the question of open open access, uh, etc. But I don't think it's a solution that can can be enforced easily with uh, the rest of the um, of the supply of information. Um, so maybe we can open the discussion. Okay. So you, you take the questions? Well, are there questions? 
Yeah. And don't forget to introduce yourself, option and country. One, two. Hi, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. That's very, very interesting. Um, also the comments. My name is Luisa, I'm from Option A, from Innovation. Um, Which country? From Brazil. Um, so, first of all, uh, I would like to know more about uh, the solution that, that you proposed, uh, because there was no time, so <laughs> the cross-regulation uh, solution, I would, I would like to know what is it about exactly. And um, also regarding the data as commons, um, I'd like to know, in your opinion, uh, more about how to deal with these limits of, uh, uh, of the economic and political power that the corporations have and how, how to deal with it. And also, I'd like to know if um, this would be um, a way to mitigate privacy issues or actually this would uh, lead to a more complicated situation regarding privacy. Yeah, thank you for that presentation. Uh, my name is Carmen, I'm from Option B and uh, from Germany. I have uh, two points. Um, the first uh, concerning the rulings you mentioned, uh, which had been brought forward by the Commission uh, against Apple. Or like, um, these rulings uh, have a sort of um, public effect, but on the same time, um, they are always too small and there's a bit of a cynical part about it because the states that grant the tax exemptions in the first place are then condemned to receive the taxes and I mean these rulings um, are of amounts that are ridiculously low compared to the revenues of, of the firms concerned. Um, so you mentioned several uh, entities uh, with which um, the regulation could be better but um, maybe you have a more um, detailed opinion on that point. And my second point um, regards uh, the question of labor, um, because uh, fundamentally um, the network and platform um, economy we see evolving uh, from my point of view, or, or at least what could be observed, creates um, two kinds of jobs. Um, on the one side we have very high-end jobs, well paid um, as developers and so on. And on the other hand, um, in the real economy, the translation of these jobs is, uh, is terrible. So if we look at um, workers of, of delivery services or, or Amazon, we see there's a very low potential to unionize these people, or it's very difficult, at least for um, traditional trade unions, to get these people together. Um, working conditions are very bad in Amazon. Uh, in Germany, there are a lot of... Um, workers from Romania, Bulgaria, they don't even speak German, so it's really hard for the trade unions to, to get them together. And I don't know if you would confirm that trend that we have um, yeah, two, two sort of jobs evolving, one at the higher and one at the lower end. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, my name is Akmoza and I'm from Option C, I'm from uh, Bangladesh. So, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. So, I want to ask you about, uh, uh, as you mentioned about this uh, um, uh, regulation. The thing is, sometimes, like general people, or like when they are ignorant about this kind of fact, and you said that it really takes time to um, solve. Sometimes, when you have we have this kind of issue, it really takes time to solve, to uh, have conversation with them, and then, but. At the meantime, like uh, the public or uh, they already suffer, and sometimes they really, like they are not really even like uh, know that what they are doing with those apps. Like uh, they, for example, there are some terms some uh, condition that people really don't even read. So even even like sometimes there are people like okay, sometimes like it's in English, but sometimes it's uh, transferred to the other country. There the language is also also issue. And then those people, they really don't care about like, okay, what is this written? It doesn't matter. I will just uh, use it. 
and then it just end up with really terrible things. So, what is your account about this? Right. Well, I think we collected enough for this. Lecture is fun. Be nice. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the questions. Um, uh, maybe for the first question was about uh, what solution of regulation, because I was very qu quick on this uh, point. Uh, my idea is to uh, gather the different uh, regulators, to, to put them together, to put them together and to uh, try to have this, uh, what I call cross-regulation, that means that uh, maybe you can catch uh, a company uh, on a on uh, through, uh, for example, through data or through tax policy, uh, and then you try to uh, uh, you try to show that they abuse their dominant position uh, by. Uh, not only studying the case of taxes, but trying to show how uh, the fact that they don't pay taxes uh, generates revenues that allow the company to, um, for example, to uh, buy the main interesting innovations on the market and to increase their uh, market power by this way. So I think that it's very important not to separate the question of personal data and privacy on the one side, on uh, um, com competition on the other side, uh, etc. and to try to speak, to, to speak and to work together. This is very important. Of course, when the, um, uh, the antitrust a regulator has uh, uh, a case about Google. If there is something about uh, what we call uh, ISPs, uh, that means uh, uh, internet uh, service providers, uh, they are going to ask the ASEP what they think about what it thinks about uh, this case. But it will be much better to try to gather all our forces and to try to uh, make uh, less texts, uh, low texts, which are uh, very complicated to apply and to have a very uh, uh, more, more clear um, rules. Uh, and the idea was, uh, can be very concrete in uh, many cases. Uh, the second point uh, was uh, about uh, data as commons. I think this question of commons, as I said before, is uh, oh, almost applied now by a different association of foundations that created open access uh, platforms. And for uh, these open access platforms exist for uh, academic papers. And, uh, uh, but this movement is was coming from, I would say, from um, the users, from professors, academics who decided that to put an end, it's not finished, the story is not finished, but to, to, to put the beginning of an end to uh, the market power of Springer, Wiley, etc., which has uh, the publisher's uh, big uh, uh, publisher, pu publishing companies, uh, that uh, uh, domin dominate uh, the market of uh, academic uh, publications. This is the first point. But to uh, do that for all the kind of data that exist on the internet is another question. They think it's very difficult. And especially what uh, uh, Google uh, gathers uh, I think it's an, another question. It, it must come from, um, from I would say, the base, uh, not from the regulators. And uh, concerning um, privacy is issues, it's a big deal for regulators, privacy issues, because uh, uh, a 
at the same time we want to protect privacy and uh, we don't want to prevent I don't speak about only the giants, but startups to work, and many startups work with personal data. And the question is to protect privacy. It's uh, we have many rules, and there is a new uh, uh, a new uh, directive in Europe at this time, and uh, the. The change on this question for regulators is that at, uh, until very recently, the fines that we could apply were ridiculous. It was about uh, uh, 300,000 euros. Uh, it was ridiculous, of course, for Facebook, etc. But uh, the, new, the new rule that is going to be uh, adopted uh, will uh, say that the fines can be much, much higher. I don't remember the exact uh, number, but I have it in my computer. And not only that, but uh, that it can be also a percentage of the revenues, total revenues, global revenues of the platform. So it will change completely the... Uh, uh, the way regulators work and their possibility to uh, to have a, a concrete a real action about Apple and rulings. Uh, uh, okay, I, I am uh, labor. This question of labor is not a question of regulation, uh, except maybe in the case of uh, uh, Amazon. But we we are very contradictory on this question. Amazon is terrible for the workers who work in Amazon. It's, uh, it's uh, the conditions uh, of working are very, very low. They are, they, uh, the, uh, they, they pay very low salaries, etc. But the problem is that every country, every country is makes, gives all the, uh, what Amazon asks in order for Amazon to uh, come to uh, it, in its country or in its region or in its city, even in France. Uh, and for example, we, at the same time, we try to deal with Amazon for them to pay correctly their taxes, and etc. At the same time, we uh, we give many advantages and even subsidies and uh, uh, tax uh, cuts to Amazon in order for Amazon to go to to to, to, to make a new uh, uh, not a shop uh, 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 warehouse. warehouse yes uh, in. In, in a place or in another place. And it's not only a French contradiction, it's a, a worldwide contradiction. And there is the same thing uh, in the states, between the, uh, the different uh, states who want Amazon to be uh, in their state and not in the, in the other one, etc. So I don't have any answer. Uh, it's, a, it's a political question, finally. I don't think it's a, an economic question because we have we know everything about this question. Then it's a it's a political question, and uh, more generally about uh, the question of uh, uh, digital economy and uh, and uh, labor. Of course, we know that digital economy has two effects. First of all, it uh, it. Uh, it, 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 it destroys uh, jobs and it creates jobs but with a kind of polarization between well-paid jobs and very, very uh, low uh, 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 jobs. And uh, I would say it's not a question of regulation. It's a question of 
the organization of um, a new uh, power balance between uh, workforce and uh, and uh, big uh, and the new economy and uh, at this time unfortunately we face a long period of uh, liberalization of uh, the job market and uh, uh, I don't know how we can cope with that it's a uh, we are in, in a period where uh, the uh, people who work and who have uh, low-paid jobs uh, are not really uh, taken in charge by, by the society. Um, in France, in the States, and in many countries. And it's a, I, I think it's a, a movement that is uh, not a question of the regulation of Internet or of platforms. And in Bangladesh, uh, you know that Google provides, wants to provide uh, uh, internet uh, access, Google and Facebook, internet access to people in the country because they want to be there. And for that, they say that we are going to, to uh, put satellites, etc., for people to have this internet access. And uh, of course, you, 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 you raise a question that is very interesting. Is it is that even when, uh, for example, uh, uh, an internet access provider or a search engine uh, includes uh, what we call in French "conditions générales d'utilisation" users' uh, general conditions. Mm -hmm. Users' agreements licenses. Okay. Voilà. User yeah. agreement licenses. Thank you. Uh, nobody reads that. It's impossible to read it, and I think that regulators should oblige, and they don't make it. It's very easy to do it, to oblige to to put on ten points very clearly what is important for the user, and all the rest would be uh, an annex. But we, uh, I don't know why it was impossible to, or I know why. It's impossible to obtain that. It's, it would be just, you know, something like that with the five or ten points that are important to know when you use uh, uh, Google, for example, and how you can stop uh, ads if you don't want ads, etc. It's possible. It's not. A, I think, you, you know, often the question of regulation, uh, at the end of the end of the story, it's a question of political... Uh, Not what I suggested is not really in the scope of the regulator, and I would argue exactly the opposite. Uh, starting from saying that we want to have, under, under the idea of we want to have competition, so that's our framework that we have in EU, it's very much in, in the scope of the uh, regulator because the regulator could say, okay, we want open standards so that competition can actually use the same at the databases. So we could envision a world where the European Union says to Airbnb, you need to open your database so that our European small startups can provide a service similar to yours using the exact same database. And I think that's not something that can grow from the bottom, that needs to be actually put in place from the top. I know it's very unrealistic, from given the power structures in, in Brussels, but it's something that is, I think, very much envisionable and very much in the scope of what we have. Yes, I see what you mean. I was in the, I, I was in the battle, if I can say that, not as a, as a member of the RC, but as, a, as a, an academic, because I made a, a report on one question, on open access. And the question of open access is the idea that all the academic papers should be uh, 
open to everybody uh, free of charge. Uh, after, after one year uh, or six months, it depends on the on the disciplines. Um, uh, in the different journals, and uh, we made proposals, etc. And I I faced all the difficulties, uh, the real difficulties when you want to uh, make open access uh, uh, effective, because uh, you have, uh, I don't know how to call that, uh, side effects of uh, the decision. Because um, for academic papers, okay. But the publisher said, but what are we going to do with uh, the small, the very small uh, reviews, uh, journals, uh, sorry, journals, and how can they live if there is open access? So I, I met the Senate, etc., and I made a proposition saying, okay, you, it's, you raise a, a, a real problem, but there is a solution. We can put in the law that each time there is uh, some money, public money, which is given to uh, a lab or to, to a university to make a, a survey, study, or research, whatever you want, there is a, a certain amount of the money uh, that will be dedicated to uh, the publication. And, uh, and finally, it was impossible to obtain that. So when I, I would say that when you are in the real life, it's very difficult because you, the, the, uh, you, you cannot imagine the power that you meet in, and uh, and uh, you don't have. The, it is the reason why I think that the solution of often come. Of course, the regulators at one time has to say we are going to open the standards, and it's an obligation. But the obligation is it's not. You see, only the, the regulator. It it's, it does not work. It has. You have to obtain it by convincing also by having a kind of a movement that comes from uh, the people, I, I would say. Yes, would like to okay. uh, raise some questions. I'm not sure how to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not marked for my uh, intervention. There is a, you mentioned at some stage that Emmanuel Macron wants to change the law and to, to um, give the judge the power to, to rule on uh, information. Uh, I think this is dangerous because we, as you said, we already have authorities in charge of that. And if the political power uh, now decides what is the truth or not, uh, it seems to me that we are on a slippery slope. What do you think about this as a regulator? I must confess that uh, for me it's not a question what you say because I totally uh, share your point of view. I think it's very dangerous, not at this time, but if we begin to give in the hands of the political power the possibility to say this is correct and this is not, you uh, that's terrible. I met this problem but it was not as dangerous as that, uh, in, the, in the field of the arts. The idea that there would be a, 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 an official art uh, with the lab label, the, the, the trademark of the state, and at the side of the official mark, uh, art, another art. It's, it's very dangerous. It's what we it's, Make in uh, in uh, uh, in in context in political context that uh, we, that we don't want to 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 be confronted with, and uh, but uh, this idea uh, was shared by many people because uh, you know Emmanuel Macron was very uh, shocked 
by the long list of fake news that were published at the time when he was a candidate uh, to the presidency. And he kept in mind, I think he kept in mind the idea that we should regulate uh, that. But I think we have the, the, the tools already. But the problem is that uh, it's when you, uh, you know, for example, we have this problem with Google. If you want to drop your uh, a, paper, a paper or a fake news about you in Google, it's just impossible. I, I made the experience, it's terrible to see that. It's impossible. I, I saw my name on lists. Uh, I, I, you can ask Google to do it, they do it, but then it's Facebook, etc., and uh, it's, it's almost impossible. The question is, is fake news and the right to forget. Okay. And these two questions that are linked together, I think, uh, again, that uh, I, I think that maybe uh, the crowd, the multitude, how we say so often, uh, has to uh, take this question in, in its agenda, if I can work. It's easy to say, but uh, I, I don't believe in regulations on these questions. Unfortunately, I would. Right. Then I think we can call it a day. Thank you so much for. Uh, I, I want to ap apologize. I never read my uh, emails uh, until the end, so I didn't see that it was until <laughs> half past twelve. I'm very sorry. Sorry, you you have m more time for <laughs> for lunch, but I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. So thank you so much for that.